Hey, how about that introduction, huh? Nothing cooler than seeing a Jeep or an off-road rig just fly through a bunch of sand dunes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Beyond the Bumper. My name is Josh. I am your host today. And today on our podcast, we have an exciting guest. We have Wendy from Newbie Women Wheelers. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Happy to be here. (laughs) <laughs> we're glad to have you. So we're going to take a few minutes. We're going to chat with Wendy about how she got into wheeling and Jeeps and off-roading and what Newbie Women Wheelers is all about. And she's got an interesting story about how she got into the industry, um, how she got her Jeep. And it has to do with a health situation that she was going through. And she's got amazing story. Um, and she's going to talk a little bit about a book that she's in and some of the articles that she's written. And she is an official E3 Off-Road Overland Ambassador. If you see the link on the screen and you go and you sign up, e3offroad.com slash nww. And if you use the promo code, which is now going on your screen, E3 Team VIP, you will be able to get 25% off any membership level. It could be the light, the standard, the premium, the VIP. It could be monthly. It could be annual. And you can add on additional licenses from the other E3 brands like aviation, camping, and firearms. So that promo code, is awesome because you can get a big, big discount on not just one, but one, two, three, four, all of our brands. And uh, it helps out Wendy. It helps her put together events and gives her a little bit of, um, you know, help and and being able to do what she she does. So make sure you do hit that link. Make sure you do use that promo code and take advantage and come over and be an awesome E3 member. And you get to hang out with people like Wendy out on the trails and events and things like that. So, that being said, let's turn it over to you, Wendy. As I said, welcome. And uh, let's let's talk about you. You know, how, how did you get into off-roading? So it, it, it's weird that I did because I grew up with, right, my mom was a drag racer. So oh. I was always around fast cars. That's my first car that I learned to drive was a, a 79, 79 Stingray convertible. And it was my mom's and they sat me on their lap and I drove. And so, and my dream car was a 25th anniversary Trans Am GT. I got that, restored it. And in 2019, I actually had a stroke and it affected the right side of my body and a lot of cognitive issues. And I was actually still in the hospital and my wife, while I had the stroke was actually in Ohio and I'm in Kansas. So she couldn't get a flight back until the next day. And she walked in and was talking to me and could tell I was frustrated. Um, I had a really big stutter, couldn't hardly talk. Um, And she looked at me, she goes, you should get a Jeep. (laughs) Josh, I thought my whole world had turned upside down. Nothing was making sense. Why this woman would tell me I need a Jeep. Isn't that the answer for anything that goes on in our lives? Just go go out, buy a Jeep. Yeah. couldn't understand where that was coming from. And I said, why would I want a Jeep? I don't know anything about them. And she said, that's exactly why. You will have to learn new things and it will give you focus. I, I still didn't didn't buy into it. Got out of the hospital, was going through therapies, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, all of the things. And just decided one day, you know what, I'm going to go look at one. Went down to the dealership, walked in and said, I'd like to look at a Jeep. I really knew absolutely nothing about them. They said, what kind of Jeep? I looked around and just pointed. I'm like, that kind. (laughs) And when they asked me what I wanted on it, I told them seat heat and steering wheel heat. That's all I knew. (laughs) So anyway, I I ended up leasing the Jeep because I figured if it really wasn't for me, I'll just give it back. Right. And absolutely fell in love with it because it did force me to learn. It was so different than every car I'd ever owned. And it was like, I didn't even know where to start. So I just, I saw an event locally that was advertised to celebrate women and no experience necessary. So I attended the event, pulled up, mind you, I'm still stuttering. So I'm really not comfortable talking to a lot of people at this point. And as I pulled up, the guy 
says, is everybody aired down and disconnected? I had no idea what he was talking about, yeah. but I didn't want to look stupid. So I was just like, yeah, good. <laughs> I'm thinking, man, I hope that's okay. But there's a trail rated badge on it. So it must be good. <laughs> so I just got in line and I was behind this big Jeep with 40, at least 40, 42 inch tires. It was a huge monster. Wow. And then I said, excuse me, sir, I think I'm in the wrong line. And he said, don't worry, your Jeep will do more than you think it can. And I just panicked at that point. I was like, I don't even know what I can do at this point. <laughs> yeah. Went out on the like, trail. You're probably thinking, you know, I don't even own this Jeep. It's a lease. You know, what am I going to do to this thing? Right. Yeah. I'm like, I think that's going to be really expensive. <laughs> so <laughs> went out on the trail and was following. And I kept hearing all these scratches and clunk noises and all kinds of all kinds of scary noises. And every time I'm hearing one, I'm going cha-ching, cha-ching. <laughs> That's yeah. something else I've just damaged. And I really don't know what that is. So we got to the point where at lunchtime, I'm like, oh, this is my out. Everybody's going for lunch. I'll just sneak out. And there were like four other Jeeps at the gate that felt the same way I did, just absolutely wow. terrified. They're like, we don't know what we're doing. This is scary. And I was like, okay, I, I, I can't do this. I'm done. So got home and anyway, kind of worked through it and said, you know, it's still learning. So I need to figure out how to learn how to off-road. Yeah. And so I started reading every article I could, watching podcasts, still going through therapy, physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy. And I had seen a group out West that was doing some camping trips and I was like, you know what, this, this is perfect. So I went, did one of those, really liked it, learned a lot. And so came back and kept doing that, kept doing that. And it was actually helping. I was, my right side was almost back to normal. Cognitively, I was really good. I had word find and forgetful, but the rest of it was coming back. I was about 11 months out and was going to attend an event. And ended up getting rear-ended at a stoplight between 60 and 70 miles per hour and had a traumatic brain injury with a brain bleed. Oh, wow. And my wife was, again, out of town working. She got to the hospital. They rushed me in thinking they were going to have to take me in for surgery and evacuate. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, what is going on? And I'm confused at the time, not understanding. And it, it totally rocked my world. I, I just thought this was it. I'm, I'm done. I can't do this again. And got home and sat in my Jeep. And actually we have 21 acres. So I just drove it around the property. And I was like, no, I'm not done. This, this is going to be good. I just have to start again. And I went to the grocery store and got a call. I was in Oklahoma. I live in Kansas. So we we discovered that I would forget where I was going and wouldn't realize it was a problem or call anybody. So I would end up in wherever I was. And so my wife and my friends put me on find a friend and I would tell them when I was leaving the house. And um, wow. <laughs> yeah, they would just tell me, hey, Wendy, put home in GPS. OK. And. I said, I can't do this. I can't live like this. So, um, sorry. I um, packed my bags and took a six week road trip by myself across country as immersion therapy. I thought if I have to do it, I'll do it. And I did that on three separate occasions with like a couple weeks in between where I would come home and it worked. I was no longer getting lost. I learned how to navigate again. And from then it was just game on. We are doing this. And so I ran into some people back home, some girls, and they were like, we see what you've been doing out there. We watch your Facebook and we want to learn that. And I said, well, come on, let's go to the park. I'll show you what I've learned. And so that's how it all started. And wow. there were just more and more women contacting me saying, hey, I hear that you learned some really, can we? Can we come? Come on. So that's, and it's, it's been amazing. 
Yeah, man, that's that's a wild story. And, you know, it, it, it's interesting because you hear from people who sort of have similar stories where, you know, something has happened to them and uh, just getting out on the road and going out and doing these things that they love has sort of like changed their lives. It's, it's gotten them back to how they were before any of the issues or the bad things or whatever that happened to them. And, uh, you know, you, you can't ever uh, say anything bad against the power of just going out in your rig uh, or any type of vehicle and just being on the open road and doing that drive and just, you know, taking that time for yourself. And, uh, you know, it's just you hear story after story about people who have done that. And it just it, it helps them so much. Oh, absolutely. For me, the there's one particular sound that always brings me back to center and that's as goofy as it is, the sound of my tires going over like rocks and dirt, just even a gravel road, just a crunching sound. <laughs> yeah, it, but it's it's therapeutic. And I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. My tires are in the dirt. I'm good because I'm still upright yeah. and I'm still doing things. That's yeah. my broom back. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Some people, you know, they like to hear white noise or like to hear ocean mm -hmm. and you know stuff like that. Mm -hmm. People with Jeeps, they like to hear going over logs and, and rocks. So, you know, yes. hey, whatever works, you know, it's different perks for different people. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And some of the women who have attended my events, and I teach them just the basics. I don't profess to be this amazing offer that knows everything. I don't think anybody knows everything, but I know enough to be safe. I know the basics. I have a firm understanding because I have studied them for the last five years. And I wheeled with people all over the country of all different skill levels and learned so much from them of not that's, only what to do, what not to do. Yeah. You know, and that's a really good point. You know, there's a lot of people out there where same thing, they go to a dealership, they buy a Rubicon or, you know, some trail rated type of rig and they immediately think that they can go and they can conquer any trail that's out there. Mm -hmm. And it's so important and so critical to be able to take the time, learn how to do things properly, how to be safe when you're out on the trail. And most importantly, get that guidance and education from somebody who is already trained or has been taught on how to do stuff because mm -hmm. you know again we hear stories we see it all the time we see videos we see people who go out and they try to attack trails and they're not set up for it or they don't have the knowledge or the education or the training and they get stuck and then obviously you know if, if those people didn't exist then there wouldn't be recovery companies and recovery really wouldn't be a thing so um but you know, it's so important to just be able to go out with someone who has put in the time to learn the different uh, safe things that you should do and the proper uh, ways of, of being able to do those things. So, mm -hmm. you know, that that's that's great. You know, the fact that you obviously have the experience you've got, you've been able to train yourself and learn and know what works, what doesn't work, what's safe, what's unsafe, and then being mm -hmm. able to teach all that into those who do want to learn and get into the sport of off-roading. And, and I've found, you know, people are, they ask me all the time, why is it just for women? And it's not that I have anything. I love wheeling with guys. I think you guys are great. What I have found is there is this demographic of women who, one, maybe they're just not comfortable asking questions around men, or maybe it's somebody that's been in an abusive relationship and they feel threatened. So there's a whole host of of things that make them not want to go to education events where there's men and women. Sure. Um, the other side of that is when you get a group of women together that are like-minded and they're all brand new and they've got the big wide eyes because they're excited to learn, there is this reaction that happens and it just elevates our whole training day or weekend, whichever we do, to the next level and everything, every time, and I don't advertise it as this, but at the end, when I ask when the sur in the surveys that I send out and we have kind of a post event follow-up, it is 99% of the time the women always say, I left there with this sense of empowerment. I can do this in my life. It has nothing to do with wheeling. You know, I've had people that have, 
moved up in rank in their jobs now because they feel more confident. And so they're willing to step out of their box and move yep. with that. And not that this is a good thing, but I mean, it is and it isn't. I also had one, one lady who attended and she said, I just, and she followed up later with me. She said, I just wanted to let you know, I have been in a horrible wet marriage for 20 years. And you know what? I can do stuff on my own. I left him. <laughs> she's now she follows up with me and she's like, I'm living my best life. And it was all because I realized I can do things on my own. So yeah, that's, that's it's, amazing. That is such an awesome story, you know, to be able to help people have that confidence and, you know, kind of uh, live their life in uh, knowing that anything that comes their way, they can overcome that and they can definitely do it. Um, and I think that is such an admirable and amazing thing that you're able to do for other women. And it's it's really I wasn't really sure what age range that I would get in these. And I've looked back through, I have everything from a brand new 16 year old licensed driver to a 73 year old. Wow. Right? It's amazing. Yeah. Two ends of the spectrum, which sometimes you, you don't really want to be around those two age groups when you're out driving around, but you know, uh, Hey, if, if those demographics and those age groups can come and they can learn what their rig is capable of and they can build confidence and you can empower them to be better drivers than uh, you know uh, so be it you know <laughs> and it's funny because if i have the wider range at a, the same event those two that are furthest apart are the two that normally find each other first and are like buddies the whole time yeah and yeah. it's just it's great it just makes me feel so good to be able to pay it forward. Yeah. And, you know, we know off-roading is, is generally a male dominated sport. So mm -hmm. when a girl can go out there and kick butt and show up, you know, and, and show off, you know, a, a better skill set than what a guy can do. Mm -hmm. That's pretty amazing. You know, I think, a, you know, girls kind of, they start cheering and, you know, they feel like, okay, I just, I just beat out this guy that's probably got years of experience in a male dominated sport, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that, <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. That, that actually, we had that happen uh, this past summer. A friend of mine went to Colorado to do some of the bigger trails and we were coming up to the wall and there were two Jeeps there already. So we parked and we were walking up and the guy was actually one of the leaders for a local four by four club in Colorado. And he goes, you know what? It's so good to see you girls out here by yourselves. And like, oh, okay. Well, thanks. It's good to meet you. And uh, he said, well, you, you girls, you go first. And we we're like, no, 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 really. We'll video you. You guys go, you were here. And he's like, no. So anyway, we ended up going first and my friend went and I spotted her. She got up. It was great. And it was my turn to come. And she said, do you need help? And I said, no, I've got my line. I'm good. Um, just stand back. And it just crawled up and it went right up. And as I was going, the, going by, the guy says, oh my God, she didn't even <laughs> spin a tire. Show off. And then he goes, would you mind spotting me? <laughs> it was just like, there you go, buddy. That's great. There's a, a girl uh, here locally where I'm at and uh, her Jeep, you couldn't get any more girly than what she's got on her Jeep. I mean, it's like this, the true and true Barbie Jeep. It's, it's, it's got a pink wrap on it. You know, it's lifted and it's got black wheels and, and, you know, the suspension has got the bumpers, it's got winches, it's got basically mm -hmm. everything that you would need, you know, from a build rig, but it is so unbelievably girly. And, uh, you know, I, I, she was telling me how she's gone out on trails and guys look at her like, you know, shouldn't you be at the mall? Why are you out here with the guys? And she just destroys every guy out on the trail. And it's, it's hysterical. You know, yeah, I love seeing that. It's, it, it's awesome. And I had um, not very much experience at this time. This was still back in 19 and I was willing with a larger group down in Southern Missouri and one of the guys from another club from another state was there and he actually his snapped his axle and his rear wheel 
fell off and he's like, I got to get back, but I don't want to pay for towing. And I'm a registered nurse. So I was sitting there and I was like, well, now if that were a broken hip, I would do this. And so I told him, I said, hang on. So we went into the woods and I grabbed two big two big logs and we got ratchet straps and I was able to hold his wheel on there and he drove it 45 minutes back to camp and I got video wow. of it and everything. And they, the guys came over from their club and put a big sticker of their club on my Jeep and said, you are a lifetime honorary member. That's awesome. That's great. 